vote on this today. In other news, officials at the Pacific Nuclear Research Facility have denied the rumor that the case of the missing plutonium was in fact stolen from their vault two weeks ago. Arabian terrorist group had claimed responsibility for the alleged theft. However, officials now attribute the discrepancy to a simple clerical error. The FBI, which was investigating the matter, has declined to comment. Hey, Doc! In reaction to Doc! Reagan's proposal to put Hello? Anybody Asia, home? Africa, and Einstein, America come here, boy. On the agenda at the coming Soviet-U.S. summit in Geneva, the Soviet Union Friday charged Reagan's U.N. speech ignored the burning issue of nuclear disarmament and served only to justify the U.S. policy of international damage. Whoa, rock and roll. Yo. Marty, is that you? Yeah, hey, Doc, where are you? Thank God I found you. Listen, can you meet me at the Twin Pines Mall tonight at 1.15? I've made a major breakthrough. I'll need your assistance. Wait a minute, 1.15 in the morning? Yeah. Where are you? Where have you been all week? Working. Where's Einstein? Is he with you? Yeah, he's right here. Look, Doc, you left your equipment on all week. My equipment? That reminds me, Marty. You better not hook up to the amplifier. There's a slight possibility of overload. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Good. I'll see you tonight. Don't forget now. 115 Twin Pines Mall. Right. <laughs> Those my clocks I hear? Yeah, yeah, it's eight o'clock. They're late. My experiment worked. They're all exactly 25 minutes slow. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you telling me it's 825? Precisely. Damn, I'm late for school. Marty, don't go this way. Strickland's looking for you, and if you're caught, it'll be four tubbies in a row. Okay, I think we're safe. <sighs> this time it wasn't my fault. The doc set all his clocks 25 minutes early. Doc, am I to believe that you both hang out with Doc Emmett Brown? McFly, Miss Parker, that's a tardy for you, and that's another tardy for you, McFly. I believe that's four in a row. Now let me give you both a nickel of free advice. Dr. Emmett Brown is dangerous. He's a nutcase. No good will come from being with him. Yes, sir. I'm sensing some attitude, McFly. You know, you're a slacker. You know, you remind me of your father. And he was a slacker, too. Can we go now, Mr. Strickland? Just a minute. I, see, I noticed that your band is on, on the list for today's dance edition. Why even try McFly? No McFly in the history of Hill High School has been amounted to anything. Yeah. Well, history is going to change. Next, please. We're the pinheads. A one, two, three, four.
going to get a chance to play in front of everybody. What, Marty, one rejection is at the end of the world. Um, well, I don't, I just don't think I'm cut out for me. But Marty, you're really, you're good. You're really good. And this audition type of yours is great. You should get, send it to the record company. And like Doc's always saying. Yeah, um, I know, I know. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything. It's good advice, Marty. Um, all right, okay, Jennifer. What if I send in um, the tape and they don't like it? What if, um, I mean, what if they say, um, get out, um, I'm no good. What if they say, get out of here, kid, you got no future. Um, I mean, I can't handle that um, kind of a rejection. Jeez, I'm starting to sound like my old man. He's not that bad. I mean, at least he's letting you borrow the car tomorrow night. Check hey, out that four by four. Hey, that hey, is hot. Someday, Jennifer, someday. Wouldn't it be great? Take that up to the lake, throw some sleeping bags in the back, lay out under the stars. Stop it. Does your mom know about tomorrow night? Nah, get out of town. I told her I'm going camping with the guys. Well, Jennifer, my mom would freak if she knew I was going up to the lake with you. I'd get the standard lecture about how she never used to do any of that when she was a kid. I mean, I think the woman was born a nun. She's just trying to keep you respectable. She's not doing a very good job. Terrible. Save the clock tower. Save the clock tower. Cause Mary Wilson wants to replace that clock because 40 years ago, lightning struck that clock, hasn't run since. We in Hill Valley Society wants to keep that clock tower the way it is. It's part of our heritage and history. There you go, man. There's a quarter. Thank you. Don't forget about to take the flyer. Now, where were we? Right about here. Jennifer! That's my mom. I've got to go. I'll call you tonight. I'll be at my grandma's. Here. Here. Let me give you my number. You're gonna find yourself Bye. On the cover of a magazine. You'll never be with the in-between But don't think twice about it You're already on your way And I hope you get your chance at a brighter day There better be a strong kind of love Waiting out there for you you loaned me a car without telling me it had a blind spot. I could have been killed. Now, now, Biff, now, I never noticed any blind spot before when I would drive the car. I can. What are you, blind McFly? It's there. How else would you explain the wreck out there? Now, now, uh, Biff, can I uh, assume that uh, your uh, insurance will pay for the damage? Uh, my insurance? It's your car. Your insurance should pay for it. Pay I want to know who's going to pay for this. I spilled beer all over it when that car smashed into me. Who's going to pay my cleaning bill? Uh, and where are my reports? Uh, well, I haven't finished those up yet, but I really figured since they weren't due till. To... Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Think, McFly. Think. I have to have time to get this retyped. Do you have any idea what would happen if I handed in my reports with your handwriting? I'll get fired. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Would you? Of course not, Biff. 
Now I wouldn't want that to happen. Hey, fly your shoes untied. <laughs> Don't be so gullible, me fly. You got the place fixed up real nice, me fly. I have your car put all the way to your house, and all you got from me is light beer. What are you looking at, butthead? Say hi to your mom for me. I know what you're gonna say, son, and you're right, you're right. But Biff just happens to be my supervisor, and I'm not that good at confrontation. But the car, Dad. I mean, he wrecked it, he totaled it. I needed that car to mark at. Do you have any idea how important this was to me? I mean, do you have any clue? I know, and all I can say is, I'm sorry. Tell you what, Marty, you're better off not having to worry about all the aggravation and headaches playing at that dance. And the last thing you need is headaches. <laughs> Kids, we're gonna have to eat these cookies on our own tonight. Your Uncle Joey didn't make parole again. It'd be nice if you all dropped him a line. Uncle Jailbird Joey? He's your brother, Ma. Yeah, it's a major embarrassment having an uncle in prison. We all make mistakes in life, children. God damn it, I'm late for work. David, watch your mouth. And come here and give your mother a kiss. Okay, Ma. Hurry up, I'm gonna miss my bus. Bye, Pop. Whew. Time to change that oil. Marty, I'm not your answering service, but when you were out pouting over the car, Jennifer Parker called you twice. I don't like her, Marty. Any girl who calls up a boy is just asking for trouble. Oh, Mom, that's as old-fashioned as the Bechdel test. What's the Bechdel test? It's when two named female characters talk about something other than a man. Why would women want to talk to each other in a movie? Anyway, there's nothing wrong with calling a boy. I think it's terrible. Girls chasing boys. When I was your age, I never chased a boy. I never called a boy or sat in a parked car with a boy. Then how are you supposed to meet anyone? Don't worry, honey. It'll just happen. Like the way I met your father. That was so stupid. Grandpa hit him with the car. It was meant to be. Anyway. If your grandfather hadn't hit him, none of you would have been born. Yeah, well, still don't understand what Dad was doing in the middle of the street. What was it, George? Bird watching? What, Lorraine? What? Anyway, your grandfather hit him with the car and brought him in the house, and he just seemed so helpless, like a lost little puppy. My heart just went out to him. Yeah, Mom, you told us the story a million times. You felt sorry for him, so you decided to go with him to the fish under the sea dance. No, no, it was the enchantment under the sea dance. It was our first date. I'll never forget it. It was the night of that terrible thunderstorm. Do you remember that, George? Your father kissed me for the very first time on that dance floor. It was then that I realized I would spend the rest of my life with him. Don't be silly. Listen, this is very important. I forgot my video camera. Could you stop by my place and pick it up on your way to the mall? Uh, sure. I'm on my way.
fountain. It's the one I've been waiting for all my life. It's a Camry, right? Bear with me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. Roll tape. Whoa, it's a, uh, um... Never mind that now. All right, I'm ready. Good evening, I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing in the parking lot of the Twin Pines Mall. It's October 26, 1985, 118 AM. This is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Annie, come on, let's get in the car. That's it. Come on, boy, get in here. Make your seat belt on. Please note that Einstein's clock is in complete synchronization with my own control watch. Okay, got it? Right, check, Doc. Okay, Einstein, have a good trip. You have that thing hooked up to the car? My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit.
He's fine. As far as he's concerned, the, the trip was instantaneous. He skipped over. That's why his watch is one minute, exactly one minute behind mine. He skipped over that minute to travel to this moment in time. Here, come on, I'll show you how it works. First, you turn the time circuit on. This readout tells you where you're going. This one tells you where you are. And this one tells you where you were. You input the destination time on this keypad. Deep, 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 deep. Say, you want to see the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Deep, 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 deep. Or witness the birth of Christ. Deep, 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 deep. Here's a red letter date in the history of science. November 5th, 1955. Yes, of course, November 5th, 1955. What, I don't get that. That was the day I invented time travel. <laughs> I remember it vividly. I was standing on the edge of my toilet, hanging a clock. The porcelain was wet. I slipped, I hit my head on the sink, and when I came to, I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head, a picture of this. This is what makes time travel possible. The flux capacitor. The flux capacitor. It's taken me almost 30 years and my entire family fortune to finally realize the vision of that day. My God, has it been that long? I remember when all of this was far land, as far as the eye can see. Old man Peabody, he owned all of this. He had this crazy idea about breeding pine trees. Oh, this is heavy. This is heavy duty to talk. Does it run on regular un unleaded gasoline? Unfortunately, no. It needs something with a little more kick. Plutonium. Um, wait, wait. You're telling me that this sucker is nuclear? Hey, 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 hey. Keep on rolling over there. Now, this sucker is electrical. But I need a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21 gigabytes of electricity that I need. Doc, you don't just walk into a store and buy plutonium. Did you rip that off? Of course, from a group of Libyan nationalists. They wanted me to build a bomb. They gave me their plutonium and I took it and in turn I gave them a case full of pinball machines that looked like a bomb. Come on, come on, we gotta get your radiation suit. We gotta get ready. Safe now. Everything's lead lined. Don't you lose those tapes now. We need that, for the record. There we go. Almost forgot my luggage. Man, who knows if they got cotton underwear in the future. I'm allergic to all synthetics. The future? So that's where you're going, that's right. 25 years into the future. I've always dreamed of seeing the future, looking beyond my years. Seeing the progress of mankind. I'll also be able to see who wins the next 25 World Series. Uh, Doc, uh, uh, look me up, when you get there. Indeed I will. Roll M. Hi. Dr. Emmett Brown. I am about to embark on an historic journey. What am I thinking of? I almost forgot to bring extra plutonium. How did I ever expect to get back? One pellet, one trip. I must be out of my mind. Ruff, 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 ruff. What is it I need? Oh my god. They found me. I don't know how. But they found me. Run for it, Marty. Ooh. Ooh. Who do you think? The Libyans. Holy smokes! I'll draw their fire! Dog, wait!
Without wings! That ain't no airplane! Look! Oh. Ooh. Oh. Excuse me. Uh. Sorry about your barn. It's already mutated into human form! Shoot it! Booyah! Oh, jeez! Oh, my God! Take that, you mutated son of a bleep blob. Huh? <laughs> oh. My pine! Why, you... Kapooyah! That was a mailbox! You space in it! You killed a pine! All right, okay, McFly. Get a grip on yourself. It's all a dream. It's just a very intense dream. And you gotta help. Don't me. stop, Wilbur! Drive! Can't be. This is nuts. Oh, come on. Perfect. When 
is his middle name. Mayor Rocco Thomas' progress platform means more jobs, better education, bigger civic improvements, and lower taxes. I really miss you, Stan. When you get here, baby, you've been away. This has got to be a dream. you order something. Give me a Pepsi free. If you want a Pepsi, pal, you're going to have to pay for it. Just give me something without sugar in it, okay? Without sugar, huh? doing? Biff! Hey! I'm talking to you, McFly, you Irish bug! Oh, hey, 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 Biff, uh, hey there, uh, guys, hey, how you doing? Um... You got my homework finished, McFly? Well, actually, I figured, um, since it wasn't due until Monday, you know, uh... Hello? Hello? Hey, anyone home? Hey, think, McFly, think! Think! I gotta have time to recopy. You know what would happen if I handed in my homework in your handwriting? I'd get kicked out of school. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Would you? Well, of course not, Biff. I wouldn't want that to happen. What are you looking at, butthead? Hey, Biff got a lot of his life preserver. Dork thinks he's going to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so how about that homework, McFly? Okay, Biff. I'll finish that up tonight, and I'll run it by first thing tomorrow morning. Well... Not too early. Mm, sleep in on Sundays. Oh, McFly, your shoe's untied. <laughs> don't be so gullible, McFly. I don't want to see you here again. All right, Let's well, bye bye. What? You're George McFly. Yeah, who are you? Say, why'd you let those boys push you around for? Well, uh, they're bigger than me. Stand tall, boy. Have some respect for yourself. Don't you know if you let people walk over you now, they'll be walking over you your entire life. Look at me. Do you think I'm gonna spend the rest of my life here in the slop house? Watch it, Goldie! No, sir. I'm gonna make something of myself. I'm going to night school. And one day, I'm gonna be somebody. That's right. He's gonna be mayor. Yeah, and I... Mayor! Mayor, that's a good idea. I could run for mayor. A colored mayor, that'd be the day. Wait and see, Mrs. Carruthers. I will be mayor, and I'll be the best mayor that Hill Valley has ever seen. I can clean up this town good. Well, you can start by sweeping up the floors. Mayor Goldie Wilson, I like the sound of that. Hey, Dad, 
George, you with the bike. He's a peeping Tom. Dad! Hey, wait. Who are you? Stella! Another one of these damn kids jumped in front of my car! Come on out here and help me take him in the house! Mom, is that, is that you? There, there, just relax. You've been asleep for almost nine hours now. I had a nightmare that I went back in time. It was terrible. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1955. 1955? You're my... You're my, you're my... Uh, my name's Lorraine. Lorraine Baines. Yeah, but you're a... Uh, you're so... You're so... You're, you're so... Uh, thin! Just relax. You have a big bruise on your head, Calvin. Oh, uh, where are my pants? Over there, on my hope chest. I've never seen purple underwear before, Calvin. C Calvin? Why do you keep calling me Calvin? Well, it's your name, isn't it? Calvin Klein, it's written all over your underwear. Well, I guess they call you Cal, huh? But actually, they they call me Marty. Oh, pleased to meet you, Calvin Marty Klein. Do you mind if I sit here? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, sure, that's uh, fine. That's a pretty big bruise you got. <laughs> Said. Dad just picked it up today. Do you have a television? Well, yeah, you know, we have two of them. Wow, you must be rich. Oh, honey, he's teasing you. No one has two television sets. <laughs> hey, hey, I've seen this one before. I've seen this. This is a classic. This is a... Ralph dresses up as a man from space. What do you mean you've seen this? It's brand new. Yeah, well, you know, I saw it on a rerun. What's a rerun? You'll find out. You know, Marty, you look so familiar to me. Do I know your mother? Yeah, I think maybe you do. Oh, then I want to give her a call. I don't want her to worry about you. You can't. Uh, 
that is nobody's nobody's home. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, listen, do you know where Riverside Drive is? It's uh, at the other end of town. A block past Maple. East end of town. Block past Maple. That's a that's John F. Kennedy's drive. Who the hell is John F. Kennedy? Um, mother, with Marty's partner inside of town and all, don't you think he ought to spend the night? I mean, after all, Dad almost killed him with the car. That's true, Marty. I think maybe you should spend the night. I think you're our responsibility. Aw, oh, gee, I don't know. And he can sleep in my room. I gotta go. I gotta go. Thank you very much. It was all wonderful. You're all great. See you all later. Much later. He's a very strange young man. He's an idiot. Comes from upbringing. His parents are probably idiots too. Marine, if you ever have a kid who acts that way, I'll disown you. Say a word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know anything about you. Listen, Doc. Ah, quiet. Listen, Doc. Doc. Don't tell me anything. Doc. Doc. It's me, Marty. You gotta help me. Quiet. I'm going to read your thoughts. You've come here from a great distance. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. Uh, you want me to buy a subscription to the Saturday Evening Post. No. Mm, not a word, not a word, not a word now. Uh, you want me to make a donation to the Coast Guard Youth Auxiliary. Doc, I'm from the future. I came here in a time machine that you invented. Now I need your help to get back to the year 1985. My God. Do you know what this means? It means this damn thing doesn't work at all. Doc, you gotta help me. You're the only one that knows how this time machine works. Time machine? I... I haven't invented any time machines. Okay, all right, I'll prove it to you. Look at my driver's license. Expired date, nine, 1987. And also, look at my b birthday, for crying out loud. I haven't even been born yet. And look at this picture of me, my brother, and sister. Uh, look at my sister's shirt, class of 84. Pretty mediocre photographic faker. You cut off your brother's hair. So tell me, future boy, who's president of the United States in 1985? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan? The actor? Ha! Then who's the vice president? Jerry Lewis? I suppose Jane Wyman is the first lady. Whoa! Jack Steady is the secretary of the treasury. And enough practical jokes for one evening. Good night, future boy. Well, Doc, wait. I know what happened. You told me the whole story. You were standing on the toilet. You were hanging a clock. You slipped. You hit your head on the sink. That's how you got that bruise. That's when you had the idea to build the flux capacitor. That's what makes time travel possible. Something wrong with the starter, so I hid it. After I fell off of my toilet, 
Something that works! You bet your ass it works! Okay, Doc, Doc, this Dr. is it! Brown. I'm standing in the parking lot of the Twin Cities. What's that speed? Look at me. I'm an old man. 1.18 a.m. Thank God I still have my hair. Oh, what's that thing I'm wearing? Looks like a radiation suit. Radiation suit? Of course, because of all the fallout from the atomic wars. Synchronization my own control. This is incredible. A portable television studio. No wonder your president has to be an actor. He's got to look good on camera. This, this Whoa, is what makes this is the next part that's possible. coming up, Doc. The flux capacitor. But I need a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21 gigabytes of electricity that I need. 1.21 gigawatts? 1.21 gigawatts. Wait, Doc, what's a gigawatt? How could I be so careless? 1.21 gigawatts? Tom, how am I gonna generate that kind of power? It can't be done. Doc, Doc, all we need is a little plutonium. Ha, I'm sure that in 1985, plutonium can be found in every corner drugstore. But in 1955, it's a little hard to come by. Marty, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't help you. Well, Doc, I can't be stuck here. I got a light in 1985. I got a girl. Doc, she's beautiful. She's crazy about me. Look at this. What she wrote here? It says it all. Doc, you're my only hope. I'm sorry, Marty, but the only power source capable of generating 1.21 gigawatts of electricity is a bolt of lightning. What did you say? A bolt of lightning. Unfortunately, you don't know when or where it's going to strike. We do now. This is it. This is it. It says here that a bolt of lightning will strike the clock towers at precisely 10.04 p.m. next Saturday night. If we could somehow harness the energy, channel it into the flux capacitor, it just might work. Next Saturday night, we're taking you back. To the future. Okay, that is good. That is good. I could spend a week in 1955. I can hang out. Maybe you could show me around. Marty, you must not leave this house. You, not, you must not be seen by anybody. You must not talk to anybody. Whatever you do could have serious repercussions on future events. Do you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Marty, how do you interact with anybody else besides me? Well, I might have bumped into my parents. Please, stop. Give me the picture of your brother. Look at this. This proves my theory. The cat gun, it's like it's been erased. Erased. From existence. Whoa! They really cleaned this place up. Looks brand new. Now remember. According to my theory, you interfered with your parents' first meeting. They won't meet, they won't fall in love, they won't get married, and they won't have kids. That's why your brother's disappearing from that photograph. Your sister will follow, and unless you repair the damage, you'll be next. Whoa, sounds heavy. Weight has nothing to do with it. Which one's your pop? That's him. Hey, you guys. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. Yeah, you guys would be... Maybe you were adopted. Real mature. Oh. Hey, Mason, you pick up my books. That's strip 
Jacqueline. Jason, didn't that guy ever a pair? McFly. You're a slacker. Shape up, man. Do you want to be a slacker for the rest of your life? No. What did your mother ever see in that kid? Ah, I don't know, dog. I, I guess she felt sorry for him because her dad hit him with the car. Hit me with the car. That's the Florence Nightingale effect. It happens in hospitals when nurses fall in love with their patients. Go to it, kid. Hey, George, buddy. I have been looking all over for you. Remember me, the guy that saved your life the other day? Oh, yeah. Good. There's somebody I'd like you to meet. infatuated with you instead of your father. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Doc, are you trying to tell me that my mother, that my mother is crushing on me? Precisely. Well, this is heavy. There's that word again. Heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? What? The only way we're going to get those two to successfully meet is if they're alone together. So we got to get your mother and father to interact in some sort of social... What, you mean like a date? Right. Oh, what kind of date? I I don't know, Doc. What, what do kids do in the 50s? Well, they're your parents. You must know them. What are their common interests? What do they like to do together? Nothing. Look, it's a rhythmic ceremonial ritual coming up. Of course, the Enchantment Under the Sea dance is supposed to go to this. This is where they kiss for the first time. All right, kid. You stick to your father like Lou and make sure he takes her to that dance. George, buddy. Remember that girl I introduced you to? Lorraine? Hey, what are you writing? Uh, stories. Science fiction stories. About visitors coming down to Earth from another planet. Get out of town. I didn't know you did anything creative. Hey, let me read some. Oh, no, 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 I never. Uh, I never let anybody read my stories. Why not? Well, what if they didn't like them? What if they told me I was no good? I guess that would be pretty hard for somebody to understand. Uh, no, not hard at all. So, anyway, George. Now, Lorraine, she really likes you. She told me to tell you that she wants you to ask her to the, under, the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Really? Oh, yeah. All you gotta do is go over there and ask her. What? Right here? Right now? In the cafeteria? What if she said no? I don't know if I could take that kind of rejection. Besides, I think she'd rather go with somebody else. Who? Biff! Leave me alone! Come on, Lorraine. You know you want it. You know you want it, and you know you want me to give it to you. Shut your filthy mouth! I'm not that kind of girl! Maybe you are, and you just don't know it yet. Get your meat hooks off me! You heard her. She said, get your meat hooks off. Uh, please? So what's it to you, butthead? You know you've been looking for a fight. Since you're new here, I'm going to cut you a break today. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? George! Why do you keep following me around? Look, George. I'm telling you, George. If you do not ask Lorraine to that dance, I will get it for the rest of my life. But I can't go to the dance. 
I'll miss my favorite television program, Science Fiction Theater. Yeah, but good. Lorraine wants to go with you to that camp. Give her a break. But look, I'm just not ready to ask Lorraine to the dance. And not you, nor anyone else on this planet is going to make me change my mind. Science fiction, science Silence, Earthling. My name is Darth Vader. I am an extraterrestrial from the planet Vulcan. Marty! Marty! George, buddy, you weren't at school. Where have you been all day? I overslept. I just woke up. Look. I need your help. I have to ask Lorraine out, but I don't know how to do it. All right, keep your pants on. She's just over there in the cafe. God, how do you? So what made you change your mind, George? Last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Falcon and said if I didn't ask Lorraine out, he'd melt my brains. Yeah, all right, let's keep this brain melting stuff to ourselves, okay? Oh yeah, yeah. There she is, George. Just go in there and invite her. Okay, but I don't know what to say. Just say whatever comes to your mind, whatever's natural. Nothing's coming to my mind. Jesus, George, it's a wonder I was even born. What? What? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Just say that destiny has brought you together. Say that she's the most beautiful girl you've ever seen. Girls like that stuff. What, what are you doing, George? I'm writing this down. This is good stuff. Yeah, okay. So, let's go. <sighs> Lou, give me a milk. Chocolate. Lorraine, my density has popped me to you. What? Oh, what I meant to say was... Hey, don't I know you from somewhere? Yes, yes, I'm George, George McFly. And I am your density. I mean, your destiny. Oh. Hey, McFly! Jeez. I thought I told you to never come back here. Well, it's gonna cost you. How much you got on me? How much do you want, Biff? <coughs> All right, punk. No money. Whoa, whoa, Biff, what's that? <coughs> That's Calvin Klein. Oh my god, he's a dream. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, kid, kid! Kid, stop, 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 stop! Hey! Let me buy your board. I'll get back to you, alright? Hey, there is, Mom! You oh. broke it! Oh!
What's that thing he's on? It's a board with wheels. He's an absolute dream. Thanks a lot, kid. I'm gonna get that son of a bitch. Where does he come from? Yeah, where does he live? I don't know. But I'm gonna find out. <laughs> God, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Run for it, Marty! My God, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Run for it, Marty! I didn't hear you come in. Fascinating device, this video unit. Listen, Doc. You know, there's something I haven't told you about the night we made that tape. Please, Marty, don't tell me. No man should know too much about their own destiny. You don't understand. I do understand. If I knew too much about my own future, I could endanger my own existence, just as you've endangered yours. Uh, yeah, you're right. Now, let me show you my plan for sending you home. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. It's good. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, now we run some industrial strength electrical cable from the top of the clock tower down, suspending it over the street between two lamp posts. Meanwhile, we've outfitted the time vehicle with this big pole and hook, which run directly into the flux capacitor. At the calculated moment, you start off from down the street, driving directly toward the cable, accelerating to 88 miles per hour. According to the flyer, at precisely 10.04 p.m. this Saturday night, lightning will strike the clock tower, electrifying the cable just as the connecting hook makes contact, thereby sending 1.21 gigawatts into the flex capacitor, sending you back to 1985. All right, now watch this. You three, wind up the car and release it. Three, I'll simulate three, the lightning. Two, three, 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 three. Ready? Pew. Set. Release. Three, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> You have stole me with a lot of confidence, Doc. Don't worry. I'll take care of the lightning. You take care of your pop. By the way, what happened today? Did he ask her out? I think so. What did she say? Knock, knock, knock. your mom! She's tracked you down! Quick, let's cover the time machine! Hi, Mark! Cal! Marty! Lorraine! How did you know I was here? I followed you. 
This is my doc, Uncle Doc Brown. Hi. Hi. Listen, Marty, this may seem a little forward, but I was kind of wondering if you would, if you would ask me to the enchantment under the sea dance on Saturday. You mean, you mean nobody's asked you? No. Not yet. What about, what about George? George McFly? Well, he's kind of cute and all, but not, well, I think a man should be strong. So he can stand up for himself and protect the woman he loves. Don't you? Yeah. Say, uh, how am I supposed to take her to the dance if uh, you're already going with her? Because <laughs> she wants to go with you. She just doesn't know it yet. You, George McFly, have to prove that you're a fighter. Someone who can stand up for yourself and protect her. But, uh, <laughs> I've never been in a no. fight in my life. <laughs> you're not picking a fight, Dad. Dad. Daddy-o. Uh, you're just coming to the rescue. <sighs> okay. Let's go over the plan one more time. 8.55, where are you going to be? Uh, at the dance. Correct. And where am I going to be? In the car with her. Perfect. So, around 9 o'clock, she's going to get really angry with me. Why is she going to get angry? You see, George, nice girls don't like it when guys take advantage of them. You mean you're gonna... No, no, George. It's just an act. It's just an act. Okay, so it's nine o'clock. You're strolling through the parking lot. You see us struggling in the car. Mm -hmm. You throw open the door and say your line, George. Oh, uh, hey! Get your damn hands off her! Yes! Uh, do you really think I ought to swear? Yes! God damn it, George. Swear. All right, so you throw the door open. You punch me in the stomach. I'm down for the count. And you and Lorraine live happily ever after. Uh, you make it sound so easy, but uh, I'm just so scared. There's nothing to be scared of, George. If you set your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Are you sure about this storm? Since when can weathermen predict the weather, let alone the future? You know, Marty, I'm going to be really sad to see you go. You've really made a difference in my life. You've given me something to shoot for, just knowing that I'm going to be around to see 1985, and seed and this, and the chance to travel back in time. It's going to be really hard waiting 30 years before I can talk to you about everything that's happened over the past few days. I'm really going to miss you, Marty. I'm really going to miss you. Doc, about the future. No! Marty, we've already agreed that having information about the future could be extremely dangerous. Even if your intentions are good, they could backfire drastically. Whatever you've got to tell me, I'll find out through the natural course of time. Dear Dr. Brown, on the night that I go back in time, you will be shot by terrorists. Please take whatever precautions are necessary to prevent this terrible disaster. Your friend, Marty. Evening, Dr. Brown. What's with the wire? Oh, just a little weather experiment. What you got under here? No, don't touch that. 
That's new specialized weather sensing equipment. You, uh, have a permit for that? Of course I do. So do you mind if we park for a while? That's a great idea. I'd love to park. Huh? I'm almost 18, Marty. It's not like I've never parked before. What? Marty, is something wrong? You're so nervous. No. No, Lorraine. What, what are you doing? I swiped it from the old lady's liquor cabinet. <laughs> well, you shouldn't drink. Why not? Because if you drink, you might regret it later in life. You're such a square, Marty. Everybody who's everybody drinks. You smoke too? Marty, you're starting to just sound like my mother. Play. Don't nobody go nowhere. Yeah. Marty, why are you so nervous? Um, Lorraine, have you ever been in a situation where uh, you, you, you knew you had to act a certain way, but when, when you got there, you just weren't sure if you could go through with it? I think I know what you mean. Y you do? Yeah, like the way you're supposed to act on a first date. Oh, uh, well, sort of. I think I know what to do. What? I don't know what it is. This is all wrong. When I kissed you, it was like kissing my brother. I guess that doesn't make any sense at all. Believe me, it makes perfect sense. He's coming. What? You did $300 with the damage to my car, you son of a bitch. Now I'm gonna take it out on your ass. <laughs> Biff, you're drunk. Well, 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 look at who we have here. No, no, no. You're staying here with me. <laughs> well, go on. This ain't no peep show. What the hell you doing to my van? What are you going to do about it?
Hey, 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 you, get your damn hands off. Oh. I think oh. you got the wrong car, McFly. George, George, please help me. Just turn around, McFly, and walk away. Are you deaf, McFly? Close the door and beat it. No, 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 Beth, you, 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 you leave her alone, alone. All right, McFly, you're asking for it, and now you're going to get it. Stop it! You're breaking his arm! <laughs> Gotta break his arm. Biff, Biff, please leave him alone. Oh, let him go. Oh, Are you okay? Excuse me. Crack a thunder, crack a thunder, crack a thunder, thunder, thunder. The storm. This is for all you lovers out there. Ain't you gonna kiss me? Oh, I don't know. Scram, McFly, I'm cutting in. What? George! 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 <laughs> Something that really cooks. Yeah, something that really cooks. All right. Uh, all right. This is an oldie. Well, it's an oldie where I come from.
All right, guys. This is a blues riff in B. Watch me for the changes. And try and keep up. Hey George, I heard you laid out Biff. Nice going. Hey George, do you ever think about running for class president? Johnny, Johnny, it's Marvin, your cousin, Marvin Barry. You know that new sound you're looking for? Listen to this. <laughs> Guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. <sighs> but your kids are gonna love it. <sighs> Lorraine! Marty, that was very interesting music. Um, uh, yeah. I um, hope you don't mind, but I asked George if he could take me home. Great, good, good, great. I had a feeling about you too. I had a feeling too. Well, listen, I gotta go. But I want to let you know it's been education. Marty, will we ever see you again? I guarantee it. Well, Marty, I'll thank you for all your advice. I'll never forget it. All right, George. Well, uh, good luck, you guys. Oh, one other thing. If you guys ever have kids one day, and one of them, when he's eight years old, accidentally lights the living room rug on fire, go easy on him. Okay? Okay! Marty! Such a nice name. Damn! Where is that kid? Damn! 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 Screech of tires! You're late! Don't you have any concept of time? I had to change! You think I'm going back in that zoot suit? The old man really came through! He laid Biff out with one punch! I didn't know he had it in him! He's never stood up to Biff in his whole life! Never? All right, let's set your destination time. This is the exact time you left. Let's send you back at exactly the same time. It'll be like you never left. Now, I have painted a white line on the street way over there. That's where you start from. I have calculated the precise distance, taking into account acceleration speed and wind resistance retroactive from the moment the lightning strikes, which will be in exactly 7 minutes and 22 seconds. When this alarm goes off, you hit the gas. Well, I guess that's everything. 
Thanks. Thank you. See you in about 30 years. I hope so. Don't worry. As long as you hit the wire at precisely 88 miles per hour, the instant the lightning strikes the tower, everything will be fine. What's the meaning of this? You'll find out in about 30 years. It's about the future, isn't it? It's information about the future. I warned you about this, kid. The consequences could be disastrous. That's the risk you're going to have to take. No, I refuse to accept the responsibility. Snaps the tree branch, breaks the wire, snaps the crack, crack of thunder. Great Scott! You get the cable, I'll throw the rope down. Right, I got it! If only he didn't tear up that letter. If only I had more time. Wait a minute. I got all the time I want. I got a time machine. I can go back and warn him. It's ten minutes ought to do it. Time circuit's on. Flux capacitor fluxing. Engine's running. Let's go! No. No, no, no. Come on!
crazy drunk drivers. Oh, Red, you look, Red, you look great. Everything looks great. Oh. 124, still got time. Not again. Libyan. You're alive! Bulletproof fest? How, how, how did you know? What about all that talk about screwing up the future events, the space-time continuum? Well, I figured, what the hell? About how far ahead are you going? About 30 years. Nice round number. All right, bye, Aini. Oh, and watch out for that re-entry. It's a little bumpy. You bet. Oh, if Paul calls me, tell him I'm working at the boutique late tonight. Linda, first of all, I'm not your answering service. Second of all, somebody named Craig or Craig called you just a little while ago. Now, which one was it?
Craig or Craig? I don't know. I can't keep up with all your boyfriends. Hey, what the hell is this? Breakfast. What, did you sleep in your clothes again last night? Yeah. Yeah, what are you wearing, David? Marty, I always wear a suit to the office. You alright? Yeah. I think we need a rematch. Oh, why? Did you cheat? No. Hello? Mom. Dad. Marty, are you alright? Did you hit your head? You guys look great. Mom, you look so thin. Why, thank you, Marty. George! Good morning, sleepyhead. Good morning, Mom. Oh, Marty, I almost forgot. Jennifer Parker... Oh, I sure like her, Marty. She is such a sweet girl. Isn't tonight the night of the big date? What? What, Mom? Well, aren't you going to the lake tonight? You've been planning it for two weeks. Well, Ma, we talked about this. We're not going to go to the lake. The car's wrecked. Wrecked? Wrecked? When the hell did this happen? Quiet down. I'm sure the car's fine. Why am I always the last one to know about these things? See, there's Biff out there waxing it right now. Now, Biff! Don't con me. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. McFly. I mean, I was just starting on the second coat. That Biff. What a character. Always trying to get away with something. Mr. McFly! Mr. McFly! It, it, this package just arrived. I think it's a new book. Ah, oh, honey! Your first novel! Like I always told you, if you put your mind to it, you could accomplish anything. Oh, oh, Marty! Here, your keys! You're all waxed up and ready for tonight. Keys? How about a ride, mister? Jennifer. Oh, are you a sight for sore eyes? Let me look at you! Marty, you're acting like you haven't seen me in a week. I haven't. Are you okay? Is everything all right? Oh, yeah. Everything's great. Wait a minute, what are you doing, Doc? I need fuel! Go ahead, quick, get in the car. Oh, no, 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 I, I just got here, Doc. And Jennifer's here, and, and we're gonna take the wagon out for a spin. Well, bring her along, this concerns her too. Wait a minute, Doc, what are you talking about? What happens to us in the future? What, do we become assholes or something? No, 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 Marty! Both you and Jennifer turn out fine! It's your kids, Marty! Something's gotta be done about your kids! Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs>